are some significant moments, but this year has been ridiculous. And now I find myself in a pre-air conditioned 812 Superfast from, I'm picking this thing up from the homeland, the motherland of Ferrari. We're in the paddock really of Fiorano. I have Enzo Ferrari's house on my left and I am picking up their latest V12 Super GT. So let's go and find some uh, stunning mountain roads, see what this thing's all about. Some fabulous twisty Italian roads. Now, I'll just calm it down quickly so I can talk about the sort of standout features of this car, but I'm gonna do this with a little difference. So, namely because I'm very aware that I am currently on the 812 Superfast press launch. So it's the, the major press publications have been invited down for the first drive of this car, and therefore there's gonna be a lot of similar content dropping at the same time. However, one aspect that I can provide is the perspective of a long-term Ferrari F12 owner, which I think is quite a fascinating thing, considering that this is the car that is replacing that car. Now, I've had the F12 for two years and 17,000 miles, and it's been a wonderful thing, but this, I mean, I've had a very short drive in it. The elements that these guys have managed to evolve to step the game on even further in a front-engine V12 Super GT is sensational. And I think it's better to start with the engine. I naively assumed that the engine in the 812 was going to be a sort of tweaked version of the engine in the F12. Whereas in actual fact, it is almost a completely new engine, uh, which you got to give these boys a round of applause because I think ultimately long term, naturally aspirated V12s, they're gonna they're gonna become a thing of the past and go to so much effort to redevelop what was already a fantastic engine. is It's just wonderful thing. Now, mated with this transmission, it is well, it's something to behold. Check this out. We've got 6% shorter gear ratios versus the standard F12. Feast your earballs on this. <laughs> wow, what a thing. Have you heard those upshifts? It is a tone change. It is seamless. There's a mild engineered tap in the back, which is lovely. But overall, it is just such a punchy shift. So, figures are 30% uh, faster upshifts and 40% faster downshifts. And this thing doesn't so much as change down a cog, it explodes down. It's like there's this explosive force that is pushing these gears down and up. Listen to this. What? Where do we go? Where do we go from there? I mean, we're in the realms now. This drivetrain, I've been in a La Ferrari. This is it. Honestly, what we have here is essentially, it feels very similar to the drivetrain of a La Ferrari. It's mated to a phenomenal high revving, and by the way, high revving. This thing revs out to 8,900. RPM. So we've basically got a naturally aspirated, super fabulous V12 engine from Ferrari that revs out to 8.9. I mean, that you might as well have just found the Holy Grail. Only you would say that the laugh would be the Holy Grail, but that's like millions of pounds. What you've got here is nigh on the same feeling upon downshift. <laughs> but in a car that's actually usable and practical too. So, yes, the biggest differences to me from spending time in an F12 versus the 812 Superfast is definitely 
the free revving spirit of the engine and just how sophisticated the gearbox is. I mean, it really is. It's it's so refined that you would you would assume you can't really push this thing any further in terms of shift speed. The drivetrain as well, for me, works better at lower speeds than the F12. Now, I'm gonna say that comparatively, the low end torque of the F12 feels a little bit hollow in comparison to this. It doesn't feel hollow, <laughs> but comparatively to the 812, there's something about the very low inertia of this car that it sets off almost like there's a magnet pulling it from standstill. It's very progressive and you don't get any of those slight jerks that you get from the twin clutch box in the F12. They really have done the job on it. Now I just done a, a fairly tight right hander there which brings me around to the steering rack. Now this is the first time Ferrari have put, <laughs> have put an electronic steering rack in a car and I honestly, when I when I read that at first, I thought, here we go, this is the beginning of the end. But actually, it really does suit the character of this car, not because they've dialed the calibration on it very well, but it's actually more important that it ties into the electronic stability programs and side slip angle control program of the 812. Now, when the uh, 458 Speciali launched, they launched a system called Side Slip Angle Control, uh, which is basically a method that allows you to drift, but if you're not quite on the ball and you, for whatever reason, depress the throttle too much after the apex, it'll trim it back a notch and basically save your ass. We are now on the fifth generation of SSC. So this is now running a very intelligent system that links steering with SSC on the rear axle, but also of course now we have rear wheel steer and it's all linked in. Now, I'm not gonna demo it to you on the road because, well, I like my driving license, but I've just driven it on the track and when this thing lets go, it's not scary at all. It's so progressive and you only really feel it helping you when you get sloppy. If you put a foot wrong, it's amazing. The car knows if you've got it or not. So it's, it really does complement your skill or lack of. <laughs> Let's talk about the rear wheel steer. Now on the track, funnily enough, is the area where I could tell that it actually had it on. I'm not sure why that is because on the road, I can't. I think it's just the overall aggressiveness of how I was pitching it into corners on track. But on the road, when you're going slower and you're going around roundabouts or even just tight hairpins, there is this virtual shrinking of it. And you can really just you know, send it around what is a conventionally tight corner with much less effort than you can in the F12. And all of this, everything that I've just mentioned has made this car a very drivable and confidence inspiring car and you might say well yeah that sounds obvious it's a very cool expensive car but the f12 is actually quite spiky at times particularly in england where we don't have the perfect road conditions often tarmac is a bit cooler uh and in the wet as well the the f12 i sometimes i'd all, almost sooner not even bother uh, because it can get so spiky. This thing, I mean, I've had it, we've been driving swift and there wasn't a single point where, where I thought, oh God, actually, if I'm not careful about this, it doesn't have an undertone of don't mess with me. Now, I'm sure if you hold the Manatino all the way over to the right and ESC off, it'll be hiding some gremlins, but with CT off, and this is a new setting, CT off is so friendly, it allows you to play and it slides around and drifts, but never in a way where you think, I better be on this or else. It really has been calibrated beautifully.
that's a road car, ladies and gentlemen. If you've got a driving license and some spare coin, it's unbelievable. Wow. So, going back to the, the comparison of this car with an F12, if you watch my channel, you'll know that I quite quickly stuck an exhaust on my car. The reason being that at lower speeds, you couldn't really hear that beautiful engine. I mean, in this, it's just sublime. Even at lower speeds, the sound of it, they've done a lot of rework, a lot of engineering on the emotion that you get from the sound of this exhaust. One of my biggest criticisms of the F12 was that at usable road speeds, you didn't know you'd paid all that money for a beautiful howling V12, which is why I went all chav on it and put a cracking exhaust. But the exhaust was fantastic and it really did transform the experience of that car because you didn't have to drive like a maniac to unlock that sensational sound that you get out of this V12 engine. But in this, no doubt people are gonna end up putting exhaust on it, but you really don't need to. The wow, the torque, that's something else. The, the torque, I mean look at that switchback, cross of the wrists. There's no need to grab handfuls of steering wheel to get around those really tight corners. The reward you get from shifting gears in this car, the drivetrain team, they need a round of applause because what they've achieved oh, is a fabulous experience. You'll also notice I'm on some pretty terrible roads. Again, damping, suspension, wonderful. The car's not skipping all over the place. It's really soaking it up. And you're able to attack what is a narrow, bumpy road like I was in a, a 488. Only you sound like God. The direction change as well. Going back to the weight. Just came through a set of tight S bends then. And the direction change is lovely. You can really lean on it. The car is actually coming in at just over 1600 kilograms, so it's no ballerina. But whatever they've done, I mean those road conditions there are diabolical. And the brakes, we've got some real tight switchbacks here and I'm having to anchor on every now and again because I'm not entirely familiar with this road. It's rewarding. It's so rewarding. Listen to that. I mean, we're driving this like a like a rear-engine supercar. What can I say? I think it'd be easier to talk about the things that I don't like about it, which are ah the aesthetics. I know. I know some people might be like, what? It's not that I dislike it, it's that it's, I'm finding it to be a grower and I'm still not warming to the front. The front end, for me, I don't know, it's a little bit bulbous somehow. And just at the end where it sort of chops off, this is like flat, gaping mouth that I'm not warming to yet. The rear I'm really getting involved with, that's really starting to grow on me. It's when you're level with it on the road, particularly from the rear, it has a really good stance about it. It sits squat and it looks great. And the um, extra aero, for example, the uh, flicked tail is exaggerated. I think it's 30 millimeters more than on the F12. You're actually getting into F F12 TDF areas now with the kind of aero package this thing has on it. Complete package, I think the best thing about it is how how you can use it. You can really use this thing. You can really drive it very much like a, like a sports car in terms of, what I mean by that is a, a compact rear engine, sort of what we would conventionally class as a sports car. This thing's, this thing's, this thing will chew road 
like a speciale. It's it's amazing. Really thoroughly impressed with how it's not an intimidating experience because this thing is putting 800 naturally aspirated horsepower through two tires. 400 horsepower a tire, sir. And it hasn't skipped a beat. Not once have I thought, good lord, brace for impact. It just gets on with it. It squats and does the deal. And Wow. The answer is yes. Everybody needs one.